let us see about the vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction does not involve in seeds some offspring can grow from cuttings for example coleus runners for strawberries tubers in potatoes you can see the tubers in potatoes over here or bulbs for tulips which are the part of the parent you can see it over here parent is potato the part of the parent is called tuber now we are going to discuss about the sexual reproduction in plants here you can see the plant over here it contain male and female pod the male pod is nothing but the stamen it consists of anther and filament which is represented over here this pod is called anther and this is filament in female pod it is consist of stigma and style ovary inside of the ovary the ovule is presented here you can see the ovule is here and this pod is called sepal it is receptacle which is placed in under the ovary and this portion is called pedicel pollen grains from the anther are transferred to the stigma by the process of pollination you can see here the anther which is transferred to the stigma this process is called pollination let us see about the vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction does not involve in seeds some offspring can grow from cuttings for example coleus runners for strawberries tubers in potatoes you can see the tubers in potatoes over here or bulbs for tulips which are the part of the parent you can see it over here parent is potato the part of the parent is called tuber now we are going to discuss about the sexual reproduction in plants here you can see the plant over here it contain male and female pod the male pod is nothing but the stamen it consists of anther and filament which is represented over here this pod is called anther and this is filament in female pod it is consist of stigma and style ovary inside of the ovary the ovule is presented here you can see the ovule is here and this pod is called sepal it is receptacle which is placed in under the ovary and this portion is called pedicel pollen grains from the anther are transferred to the stigma by the process of pollination you can see here is the anther which is transferred to the stigma this process is called pollination let us see about the pollination pollination is the process by which the pollen is transferred from the anther to the stigma that is male pod to the female pod of the plant thereby it's enabling the fertilization and reproduction here you can see the pollination process which is carried out by the bees pollination is done by wind insects and birds now we are going to discuss about the types of pollination pollination is subdivided into self pollination and cross pollination in self pollination the plant pollinates its own eggs whereas the cross pollination the pollen from one plant which pollinates another plant's eggs you can see it over here let us see about the conifers conifers are monoecious plants that produces both male and female cones and each making the necessary gametes which is used for fertilization the conifers that is non flowering plants are all called conifers the conifers have produced gametophytes so it is called gymnosperms the conifers are wind pollinated plants you can see the conifer and wind pollinated plants over here 
Now we are going to discuss about the conifer life cycle. Here you can see the N and 2N representation. Here the N is represented by caploid and 2N is represented as diploid. This process is start with fertilization. From the fertilization, the seed coat is formed. Inside of the seed coat, the food is reserved that is haploid. From there, the seed is formed. And after that, the seedling, that is seedling process is carried out. From the seedling process, the mature sporophyte is formed. In sporophyte, it contains ovule cone and pollen cone. Inside of the sporophyte, it contains ovule, which is present inside the ovary. From the ovule, it forms an integument. By the meiosis process, we get surviving mehaspore. From there, it forms a female gametobite, and this female gametobite forms a nucleus. And again, the fertilization is process is carried out, and this way the cycle is carried out. Now we are going to discuss about the advantages of asexual and sexual reproduction. Here the asexual reproduction it does not require special cells or a lot of energy but sexual reproduction a lots of variation within a species. Asexual reproduction can produce offspring quickly but sexual reproduction it is able to live in a variety of environmental settings. Here the asexual reproduction it is a stable environment creates large thriving population is here but whereas the asexual reproduction it has able to adapt the changes in the environment. Now we are going to see about the disadvantages of asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction has limited ability to adapt. Whereas the sexual reproduction, it needs the time and energy to adapt the environment. And asexual reproduction is a phase massive die off if environment is changed. But here, it produces a small population. Thank you for watching from GTEC. Let us see about the pollination. Pollination is the process by which the pollen is transferred from the anther to the stigma that is male part to the female part of the plant thereby it's enabling the fertilization and reproduction here you can see the pollination process which is carried out by the bees pollination is done by wind insects and birds Now we are going to discuss about the types of pollination. Pollination is subdivided into self-pollination and cross-pollination. In self-pollination, the plant pollinates its own eggs, whereas the cross-pollination, the pollen from one plant which pollinates another plant's eggs. You can see it over here. Let us see about the conifers. Conifers are monoecious plants that produces both male and female cones and each making the necessary gametes which is used for fertilization. The conifers that is non-flowering plants are all called conifers. The conifers have produced gametophytes so it is called gymnosperms. The conifers are wind pollinated plants you can see the conifer and wind pollinated plants over here now we are going to discuss about the conifer life cycle here you can see the n and 2n representation here the n is represented by caploid and 2n is represented as diploid this process is start with fertilization from the fertilization, the seed coat is formed. 
Inside of the seed coat, the food is reserved, that is haploid. From there, the seed is formed, and after that, the seedling, that is seedling process, is carried out. From the seedling process, the mature sporophyte is formed. In sporophyte, it contains ovule cone and pollen cone. Inside of the sporophyte, it contains ovule which is present inside the ovary. From the ovule, it forms an integument by the meiosis process. We get surviving mehaspore. From there, it forms a female gametobite and this female gametobite forms a nucleus and again the fertilization is process is carried out and this way the cycle is carried out. Now we are going to discuss about the advantages of asexual and sexual reproduction. Here the asexual reproduction it does not require special cells or a lot of energy but sexual reproduction a lots of variation within a species. Asexual reproduction can produce the offspring quickly but sexual reproduction it is able to live in a variety of environmental settings. Here the asexual reproduction it is a stable environment creates large thriving population is here but Whereas the asexual reproduction, it has able to adapt the changes in the environment. Now we are going to see about the disadvantages of asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction has limited ability to adapt. Whereas the sexual reproduction, it needs the time and energy to adapt the environment. And asexual reproduction, it's a phase massive die off if environment is changed but here it produces a small population thank you for watching